Today, I just want to spend a little bit of time reminding you from where we've come, but to also give you some hope about where we're headed. I believe that though the terrain forward will be rough, I know who we're walking with because nothing compares to a long walk with God. I often remember a poem my dad taught me as a kid. He said, two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And standing there, long I stood until it bent in the undergrowth. When there were two roads, I took the one less traveled by. And that, my friends, has made all the difference. This is Pastor Courtney Clayton Jenkins, and today we're honoring my 12th anniversary as the pastor of South Euclid United Church of Christ. Typically, I would bring in a preacher from somewhere, someone who would fly in, preach a word, encourage me to run on and see what the end shall be. But this year, I wanted to do something different. While traveling on a Greek islands cruise with Dr. Cynthia Hale, my mother in ministry, we were making a stop here in Santorini, and I thought it would be a great opportunity to reflect on these 12 years and all that God has done. I think you will notice with me that I'm in a space where, of course, there's a church. There are churches everywhere. In fact, there are over 450 churches right here in Santorini. Santorini in 1600 BCE had a volcanic eruption that caused this land to shift and as an act of resistance, churches in massive numbers have been built here. But I appreciated the knowledge that these churches come out of the ashes. I resonate with that because that is the story of what was Euclid Avenue Congregational Church at the time I arrived and now what many of you know as South Euclid United Church of Christ. Just a couple of hours after I received the phone call that Euclid Avenue Congregational Church wanted to consider me as their possible new pastor, a few hours later I got that call from my mother that the church had been struck by lightning, the building completely destroyed by fire. Many of you have heard this story. I had looked at question number 18 in, in the profile that came and, and what it told me was that this church had not made a major move, a major decision by their own confession in 40 years. Before I even knew about the fire, I had determined this wasn't a good fit for me, but God has a sense of humor. As I stand here with the church in the background, right there around the edges of the church are a vineyard an opportunity for something to grow, maybe from a challenging and troubling spot to move through the process of becoming new wine. And yet, I'm standing right outside the church in the midst of an area where there's not much, just rubble and road. It reminds me that every church and every pastor has a choice about what they're going to do. Early on in my ministry, I read with Euclid Avenue Congregational Church. I had these things called quarterly leadership retreats. We met together in the basement and we read this book as a church entitled, I Refuse to Lead a Dying Church. It was by a gentleman named Paul Nixon. In that moment, we had a choice as a church of whether we were going to use our vineyards and grow or whether we were going to let the fire have the last word. We met in that space and we struggled in that space, but through it we rose. I'll never forget one of those quarterly leadership summits sitting down with Deacon David Buckle and he shared with me that, that the church would be willing to make an investment if it would generate growth. And what he needed to see was a strategic plan to do just that. We hired uh, uh, some wonderful people in the community and began to develop that plan. And from that plan came the, the hiring of Reverend Carla Jo Howlett. It, it came the hiring of Minister Jeremy Stinger. It, it became the development of our staff with Reverend Avery Danage and so many people who worked alongside in those early moments to help us rise. It was 
a choice. A choice to not die. A choice to see a church live. And if I can be honest, over these last 12 years, we have had our ups and we have had our downs, but the choice between life and death has always been life. And I wanna say to you as your pastor, it's not been an easy choice. It's not been an easy choice and it's not been an easy road, but together we have walked with one another, supported one another gotten our hands in the trenches and in the dirt together. We've seen each other through challenges and changes. I've been there for you and you have been there for me. And together we chose to come up from the depths of that basement to live, to survive, but most of all, to thrive. The challenge is that churches are changing. If you're on an island like Santorini, where there are over 450 churches, I sit down and I ask myself as the pastor, Courtney, what are you going to do? You've got to be in one of those churches that makes it. I believe that though the terrain forward will be rough, I know who we're walking with because nothing compares to a long walk with God. Come on and walk with me. Let's go. These grape vineyards, they grow them in coils in an effort that they don't take up so much space, like in Napa where they grow them in rows. You know, sometimes in ministry, you've got to come up with creative solutions and not do it the way everybody's done it. I know that we expect the neat rows and the truth is for churches, we expect neat rows, but we're human. We're people. We've got flaws, we've got challenges. We're a place to love people who walk in straight lines, but we're also a place to love people who coil up. Got to do things different. When I made that resolve that I refused to lead a dying church, it was to understand it probably wasn't going to happen in neat rows. It was probably going to happen in a place like this, a place where Something can grow, but you're gonna to have to cultivate it in soil that many people said they couldn't. And the truth is that's what I've been trying to do. I've been trying to cultivate people into sacred community. I've been working to try to change lives. I've been trying to help people be disciples of Jesus Christ. And by doing that, to break the patterns that keep them bound. It's been hard. The soil has been tough. But I thank God that good things can grow in tough soil. We could have ended up like a pile of bare rubble. But God saw fit for us to grow in tough places. And for that, I'm thankful. Shortly after we moved to the campus of South Euclid United Church of Christ, I had just had Caleb, we were in the gym. We started off there and we really tried to bring events to the city, to the community that would draw people in, to know we were a new church and we were there and we weren't a church that was about checking neatly checked boxes. We were a church that was willing to invest in our community, willing to provide for it, willing to work with it willing to sow into it. We wanted to be much like this tree I'm sitting under. We wanted to be a protective shelter and cover to those who lived in South Euclid. We tried really hard and I think we've done a pretty good job. I mean, our, our bin food pantry continues to feed nearly 300 households per, per month. Or, or I look at the way that we've given back in terms of housing for those who were struggling during the pandemic or paying off credit card debt or Servolution where we served hundreds of thousands of hours in an effort to make the city better. We sought to be a covering, a safety, place of hope. It's been rough. There's been some moments and some nights that I've cried. There's been some panic attacks along the way, but 
I've tried over these last 12 years to be very faithful to the call, to build a church that provides shade for the community, a place where now adults with special needs come so that they can have job readiness skills, a daycare back on our campus to make sure children are learning and growing in the community. It's taken a lot to get here. And I've not done it by myself. I mean, we've done it together. People have come and people have left, but we've done it together. We've partnered together. We've worked together. It's really a day to celebrate pastor and people. And then as I film this video, how can we forget Brave New World? The thought of a digital campus, an opportunity to communicate with people all around the globe. And the truth is when I started this, I thought that it was just about an online campus, an opportunity for people to engage in worship in small groups. But as sabbatical has proven, there's another call, kind of a, a, a Brave New World 2.0 to do work like this, to tell stories, stories in Bali, stories in Greece, stories inside of our own country, stories on the shores of Africa, places where people are being resilient in their faith, a place where people are meeting God for themselves. And the truth is, I think that's the future of ministry. The future of ministry is not in platforms and pulpits. I think the future of ministry is right here in sitting down with people, hearing their stories and hearing and sharing how they learned God for themselves. See, one of the things I love about our denomination is it acknowledges that each generation has the opportunity to make their faith their own. And I believe storytelling is one of the ways we make the faith our own, one of the ways that we show, not just in Bible stories, but ways in which we become living testaments. Living testaments, you, you know about the Old Testament, the stories of how God met with many of men and, and changed their lives. You know about the New Testament, that's, that's the stories of Jesus and the churches and, and the unbirthing and the unfolding and the inclusion of so many who had been excluded in the Old Testament. And I feel like God is calling for living testaments, for you and for me to be the testimony, the living testimony of what God has done. And as we continue to embark on these endeavors, I think this is how we will pull people in. I think this is how we will shape lives because people will see that God has done it in so many others. And now God can do it here in me. We have been the tree to provide the shade. And now what I'm learning is it's no longer about the tree being in one place. It's about planting trees in different places and creating shade wherever people need to feel a break from the scorching heat that the world provides. Let's keep building together. I figure it's time to dream new dreams. I think it's time to pivot and move into a different level of relevancy as a church. We have the deep opportunity to change lives. You know, this church is perched up on a hill and the Bible says, you don't put it on a hill and bury it under a bushel basket, but you let it shine bright. And as we move into a new chapter, we've gotta be that church on the hill. We've got to be that place where people come. They come physically, they come virtually, they come spiritually to find in Christ what it takes for their lives to be changed. I think that if people could move more into their purpose, if people could find healing, the world would change for a better place. And that's totally up to us. I want to see it. I believe it will be so. Little figurines. Let me step in for a reason. 
you know, what's interesting is that all of these artifacts are of people who at some point were living and they had these stories and their stories deserve to be told. We tell the story of Jesus all the time. It's the most critical story. It's the story all of our faith is dependent on. But all of these other saints, all of these other people, their lives were changed because of Jesus. So then the question becomes, what's our story? What's your story? You may not be on a wall, but you got a story. And I believe our future is in these living testimonies, these living testaments, that we are people who are still making it, people who are resilient, people who've come through. And just like she's working on these donkeys, handcrafted, we're also handcrafted by God, artwork to share of who God is and how special God is, but how special we are as God's creation. It's a blessing. When we moved to South Euclid and we were becoming very involved in the community, one of the things I really had to lean into is the reality that part of our call is to be among people, to be out in the community to be influencing the hustle and the bustle, not necessarily with our own agenda, but just simply to show up, be present, be who we are. And as we lean into the authenticity of who we each are, it allows our light to shine. And when our light shines, then people lean in and wonder, how are we shining bright in the midst of dark times? And so I think that part of the work we did, part of what we walked through together, what I know I've been trying to do as your leader, is to simply give you the courage to not repeat the patterns that hide your light under a bushel basket, but instead to help you reframe those patterns, heal from those patterns and allow your light to shine. Part of what it means to be your pastor, to be your preacher, is to literally practice what I preach. So as I've tried to break patterns with you, I've had to face the patterns within myself. I've had to face the reality that sometimes I've tried to be like other pastors and not really lean into who God really called me to be. And that's tough, but that's growth. And I'm not afraid to share my failures, not afraid to share my successes. I've never promised you that I was a perfect pastor, but I've always promised you to be an integrous one. And that's what I've tried to do, the best of my ability, to be a pattern breaker in my own life, to show you how to be one in your own. And so when we moved into our new sanctuary, we adopted a brand new mission statement to transform the lost into the found and the found into followers of Jesus Christ who gather, who grow, who give, and who go. And together, we've tried to do that. And for the years ahead, we will continue. But what I've learned through sabbatical and what I've learned as I've been traveling the world is that at some point, we've got to make a pivot. We've got to make a turn. That how it used to work, how it used to flow, maybe doesn't flow so well anymore. And that's okay. Sometimes, even though something's working great, the sun still has to set on it. Because God wants to do something for a new day, new time, new season. So I filmed Faith in Cleveland Bali edition, and this is Faith in Cleveland. Santorini Greece edition. But the truth is, the call is way bigger than Cleveland. Cleveland is the headquarters, Cleveland is the location, but Cleveland's only the beginning. And so today, the sun sets on faith in Cleveland, and the sun rises on living testaments an opportunity 
to expose Cleveland to the world and the world to Cleveland. An opportunity to show the resilience of faith. That sometimes it's not about holding on to the sunset. Sometimes it's letting the sun set into the sea and trusting that tomorrow a new day will rise. So for 12 years, and for a couple more, a few more good years, let's lean into what God is doing and tell some really good stories that I believe will change some really good lives. Tomorrow, it's a new day. But for this moment, let's settle in to the sunset. All is well. Amen.